All right, guys, what's going on? So everybody here knows I like to get up, fish a lot of shallow cover. I like to stay in the current. I like to stay in stained water, shallow as much of the year as possible. And one of my baits I throw every single day I go fishing, that right there, a jig. This is the box I keep in the boat all the time. This has me covered for every single application. I don't keep a ton of different colors. And I'm gonna show y'all in this video right here, the jigs I pretty much keep. I mean, this is literally the box I take out of my boat. I leave this same exact box in my boat no matter where we go in the country. I feel like I can catch five fish on something in this box. So I'm gonna show y'all today what I do, how I keep it simple, and how I catch big ones on this jig. So I'm gonna start off with the one that I've thrown the least in my life. Did have a couple days last year where I really, really caught them pretty well on it. I've already dug it out so I don't have to fumble through this box, but it's basically a football jig. And I mean, all you wanna do with this thing is pretty simple. I have found that you wanna go lighter than you would think you want to go. So like a three quarter ounce football jig or something like that, a lot of times I don't get as many bites on that. There's something about throwing a little bit lighter football jig down there pretty deep that seemed to get me a lot of bites out of some tougher schools last year. So I would just put any kind of a crawl trail on this. I don't keep much black and blue in this jig particular. Everything I throw is going to be pretty much one of those colors, a green pumpkin, a, some kind of crawl color, because it's going to be clear if I'm going to be fishing deep. So this is the football jig. I just you know throw it just like that i do trim the skirt down just a hair put a small little crawl ultraviolet speed crawl a little rage crawl on back something like that and then drag it around any kind of boulders any kind of pea gravel points anything like that even drug it around some deeper docks last year and caught a couple but anyways football jig i don't throw that very much at all we're gonna get to the more fun one now so this is the same jig rod that i use all the time i use it on pretty much every single jig seven foot three heavy point blank and I have used this as set seven foot three heavy fast. I use it for a swim jig and a big flipping jig. All my, 90% of the time if I'm throwing a jig, I'm throwing on this exact rod right here. So this is the flipping jig that I'm throwing right now. The water's clear right now. We're in the spawn to post spawn part of the, you know, fish migration. So I'm gonna be throwing a lot of stuff that looks more like bluegills than I would other times of the year. So I'm, I don't have a single black and blue jig tied on right now. I have a white swim jig and then everything else green pumpkin. So. This is the flipping jig. I'm gonna tell you the first thing I look for in a jig is the hook. I'm sure that's the same for every single body you'll talk, talk to. The people think about a jig and they wanna find the jig they like and then try to fit a hook inside it. But the guys who really know how to design a jig, they'll find the hook first and then build the jig around the hook. And that's what you have to do if you wanna get all the right components in a jig. So I'm gonna tell you what I look for in, a, in the, the jigs. I like to check the hook out first and foremost, make sure the line tie, you can see right here I got my knot tied to it. The line tie is a good bit lower than the hook point. So this is the normal flipping jig right here. That's the one I'm gonna skip docks with. I'm gonna fish it, you know, six to eight foot most of the time. Half ounce is what I keep on. It's got a flat bottom, green pumpkin, little speed crawl trailer, and then a big hook because I, uh, this hook right here is not gonna flex on full carbon. And this is a jig I'm never gonna throw on braid. I'm always gonna throw it on full carbon. I'll flip wood with it, and that's just it. But the biggest thing you want to look for is a good hook gap between the hook, the line tie, and the hook gap. Another thing, I like for the weed guard to be extremely close to the line tie. So this jig actually is not like that. If I, if I was designing this jig, I'd put the weed guard a little bit further forward. I feel like it gives you a, a little bit better hookups as far as that goes. But anyways, that is the first thing I look for is the hook point. Second thing, make sure the weed guard's at a good angle. If the weed guard's too far away, you're going to get hung up more than if it's too close. So I like for the weed guard to be fairly close to the hook point and a very, very stiff weed guard. Second thing, you know, I mean, the last thing you look for is a skirt. So the colors of skirts to me is the least important. I really don't care that much about colors, just something that looks relatively natural and I'll keep it tied on for 12 months out of the year pretty much. So that's my flipping jig setup and 20 pounds of carbon. This is actually 18 pound K9. I'm throwing on this because I'm fishing a little bit clearer water right now and I want a little bit faster of a fall. When I'm fishing a little bit deeper and a lot of clear water, I'll go down to 18. I almost never go down to 15 pound line, but I will use 18 for this application sometimes. But with that hook is so stout, I wanna make sure I have big enough line to really set the hook hard and not break any off and get them out of the heavy cover, which is the main thing I'm gonna target when I'm throwing this bigger jig. Here's, now this right here is my baby. This is the one that I like throwing so much. Growing up in Alabama, we do this all every single day, all year, doesn't matter if it's January or July, we are always throwing a swim jig. I mean, it's just one of the things that we do in my area in Alabama. And obviously, y'all seen this. The main reason y'all see me throwing white constantly is because white shows up really, really good on videos. Same reason I throw a white frog, I throw a white swim jig. I feel like it just makes for better videos because you can pick up on this color so much better. So the, this is the same exact rod. This is a seven foot three, heavy, fast. This one though, I keep braid on from all my swim jig rods, I keep braid on. 
And the reason for that is, whenever I'm shaking this swim jig, you can see I shake it pretty violently. And I never move the jig with the reel. I always move the jig with the rod. So I shake it, I pop it three inches, reel the slack up, pop it again, reel the slack up. But I do that very, very quickly. And the thing the braid does, the braid gives you a very direct connection whenever you snap it. So as soon as you snap it, it makes the bait jolt. If you do it on fluorocarbon, there's more of a drag to the bait. It doesn't have that jolt that I like to have. So I always throw my swim jigs on braid unless I'm swimming around docks in crystal clear water. Sometimes I will go to fluorocarbon. But same exact thing here. But the difference with a swim jig and the other kind of jigs is I, I like for the hook eye to be turned. I, will, I guess this will be called vertically. It's the same exact way as the hook. And then if you see like my flipping jig, here's a little bit downsized flipping jig, the line ties the opposite of the hook. So I guess this will be horizontal and the other will be vertical. So a swim jig, I like for the line tie to be vertical and also to be way out in front. But you can see right here, this hook, the hook, point and the line tie, still a very huge gap. This swim jig right here is actually the Untamed Tackle Punisher swim jig. It's got a five all owner jungle hook in it. Not gonna bend this thing out, even throwing it on 50 pound braid and setting the hook like a man bad, like a madman like I do most of the time. But in a, a swim jig, the main thing I wanna look for is the line tie to be turned the other direction. I want the head to be triangular. And then after that, it's all about the color. Cause on swim jigs, I really, really do think the color matters a lot more than a flipping jig. Cause I'm usually throwing this in highly, highly pressured lakes. And I just really like for the skirt to be really full, but at the same time, so I want to give it off a big profile, but I like for it to look like this one does, as far as it looks extremely natural coming through the water. It moves a lot. I, I just feel like the skirt is the most important on a swim jig, more than a flipping jig. For whatever reason, that's just how I feel. So this is my baby, swim jig, and y'all see me throw a lot of different trailers on that. People ask me, did you change trailers and do you use, I don't use anything exclusively. I might go to, like last year I went to Table Rock where the water was super clear. I was fishing a little bit deeper, but I was fishing the bait extremely fast. So I put on a small zoom speed crawl on it because that would help me move that bait so fast. That was necessary in that super clear water. If I go to real muddy water, I'm gonna put on a zoom uh, super speed crawl, the big one. It just slows it down so much. And if I'm in medium to stained water, I usually use like a net bait pack crawl. I mean, just, I change trailers constantly to make the jig track differently in the water or just act differently anytime. So it's not that I always use the same trailer or I've switched trailer brands or anything like that. I deviate them every single day depending on the situation I'm in. So that is basically everything that I do 90% of the time. I have a flipping jig and I keep in this color, in this jig right here, I keep black and blue and I keep green pumpkin. Now in this jig right here, I keep white a green pumpkin and then I keep a black and blue. So the only difference in all my jigs, I keep white on a swim jig. Another thing that I do occasionally though, is I, when I'm fishing a lot of spotted bass lakes or smallmouth lakes, I'll go down to a tiny little jig like this. So I'll show you these two. And I kind of cut this big flipping jig down as well. But you can see it just has a little bit smaller of a profile. I mean, you might not be able to tell it that much on the video, but this does have just a little bit smaller of a profile. And what that does is it falls even faster, even though I've got the same as far as casting goes, same rod, still got a decent hook in the jig, but it'll fall even faster because it has an even smaller profile. And whenever I'm fishing for spotted bass a little bit deeper or smallmouth, I'll usually go to a little bit smaller jig. So, but the biggest thing you gotta look for in jigs, I said this in a video a long time ago, but I, I didn't have any subscribers then hardly at all, and I don't have very many now, but the best thing you gotta look for is make sure that hook point is way above that line tie. So hope you can see that pretty well. Hopefully it focuses in on it. That's the deal. And keep it simple, man. Go out there, put a jig in your hand, make sure you got the right color for the water clarity and something that matches the bait in your home lake or wherever you're fishing and just cover water with it. When you get around a fish that's willing to bite, a jig is one of the first things they're gonna bite. It just has been a proven producer for years and years and years and it will continue to be that way. So hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned a little bit about jigs and if not, you got to see the way I did it anyways. So that's it for me. That's how I do things. And I, one thing I didn't say on the flipping jig, it's pretty much the same thing as I do on the swim jig. I will change the size of the trailer and the color of the trailer to match. I always try to match them, but I'll try change the size of the trailer to deviate how I want it to fall in the water. So I use all kinds of different stuff. I just seem to like the little speed crawl the most. So that's it for me, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. I will see y'all next time. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button because eventually we're gonna be back on the road fishing tournaments and you don't wanna miss it, so go ahead and subscribe. Okay guys, so I was out here putting the stuff up after making that jig video and I wanted to mention to y'all, so first thing, 
upriver rod sleeves, the ones you see in here, the link is in the description for the code for them to get 10% off. Or I think it's actually 20% off. So KW10 gets 20% off. Anyways, the guy who made Will Jones, the, the sponsor of mine that made my front graph mount, the one that I showed in y'all's video, the, the video that I made about showing off my boat, if you haven't seen that, I will link that video in the description. But anyways, super good dude. He has been making these face shields that you see right here for all the medical employees. They go over the N95 mask that you're already using. And what it does is it helps block this virus off. So if anybody that you know in your hometown works in any of these health industries or is taking care of sick patients and needs some stuff like this, hit up my man Will. I'll leave his contact stuff in the description as well. We're leaving whole, all kind of crap in the description for this. So anyways, give him a call if you need stuff, the mount done, anything metal related done. But if you work in the medical industry and you need these face masks, let him know. He's been so, so good about this whole deal. So that's all I wanted to say. Appreciate you guys watching. I will see y'all.